Hey everybody, this is Grace, and in this video I want to talk about something that I think I've mentioned at least once before over all these years, and uh, I've been making videos for, on my original channel, seven years, just a week ago, so, not on this topic, but anyway, this, in this one I want to talk about, uh, more about some of the reactions I've seen, I've seen, as in read their comments, um, to videos when I talk about the people I've seen who have their behaviors are rather histrionic. I'm not diagnosing them, but their behaviors seem to me to be histrionic. I am a social and behavioral scientist. I was a career student and in personal life experience with these I grew up from birth seeing this kind of these kinds of behaviors. And it's night, non, like non-stop in my life. Um, at least one, usually more. But when I describe them, I usually say that they don't all do this, and not everybody who does these things. Um, that it doesn't mean that that's a histrionic behavior. But what I've seen most, and what I usually say, is for one, the the way they that they're loud. Okay, they're loud. In their speech, their laughter is more like a cackle and it's very loud. Um, their clothing, anything about their appearance is very loud. That's how I see it. And they're very dramatic. Um, they're drama queens. They love to do the smear campaign behind people's backs in a, an adult mean girl kind of way. And they have their uh, other little mean girls followers. Um, some would might call them narcissistic flying monkeys, but no, these are, their behaviors are rather histrionic too. I personally see that um, histrionics are much more destructive than narcissistic people. Okay, people who just are narcissistic and people who are just histrionic. But the blend <laughs> is even more, it's even worse, but... I have seen both. Like I said, I'm not diagnosing anybody. I don't know anybody who's been diagnosed with either one of those personality disorders. But what I have seen of these, like I said, they are very destructive. They are very hateful, mean. Um, you know, they will do anything to ruin you, your life. And they, many of them, um, you know, get a kick out of it. A big kick. I'd say all of them do. If they can cause you any form of grief. Or that they see you have misfortune. Schadenfreude kind of thing. Um, yeah, these are just, the, like I said, adult mean girls. And they don't have to be female. Okay. And males can be that too. But some people seem to think, you know, for, focus more on... Um, focus more on narcissistic people. I don't know. Like I said, I, I see it more as a histrionic. But, you know, to go on, they, they're very loud. They, they want attention and they don't care how they get it, what kind of attention it is. Negative attention or positive attention, they don't matter. It doesn't matter to them as long as they're getting attention. Now, narcissistic ones, they tend to want attention but they want it to be that somebody's basically glorifying them. The histrionic ones, no. They just want to be center of attention, and anybody who's negative toward them, to them, they just don't know. That, you know they're not that smart, or they uh, just are unaware, or they're just haters. They're just to them. That's just a hater. That's just a, you see, um, because they believe that they are perfect. In every way, <laughs> you know, seriously, perfect in every way. They never do wrong. Um, yeah, but the, but it goes on from there too. And they are just the ones you will find, like especially at work. Um, you, know, you know, that are slackers. They don't want to do their job, and anybody who is actually doing their job, they will cause so much pain and grief, and you know, v mental anguish, I shouldn't say pain, but mental anguish, you know, in, in various ways, snide remarks, malicious gossip, 
Um, they, they will even steal things from the person's desk. Or if they have any access, they can you know, change around the person's work online. Whatever it is, they will do it. Because they, they instead of putting their energy into actually w working, they put their energy, energy into actually destruct, you know, being destructive. Okay. This is my experience, I'm saying. Read the disclaimers in the description box below this video on YouTube. Okay, and a lot of what they do is behind the scenes. You know, where the person, their, their target, will not know, won't even have a clue. Like, they go and tell people their target did this, that, and the other. And they, they totally created it in their mind. You know, it's all false that they'll do that. Okay? To, you know, ruin the person's reputation. They don't care about slander, defamation of character, any of that stuff. No. You know, they, they just, you know, make those um, statements. They don't care. And uh, there's a reason this is on my mind, like I said. Um, you know, also, I, what I have noticed over the years is these are people who will get into a relationship, say a marriage, an actual marriage, you know, eventually down the line. Um, and that they'll use everything that they have to get in that marriage, um, you know, being very provocative. They're like that no matter whether they're married or not. Um, they, they're like that with anybody. And if they, if they can get what they want out of that person. And uh, say once they get into a marriage, all of that kind of thing with the person they're married to just kind of goes away. You know, if they were using some one certain kind of thing to get in that relationship, that kind of thing just goes away. Okay, um, you know what I'm talking about. But they, they'll they get it, they'll, sometimes, not this is not 100% in any of this. Not all of them do it, not all of them, you know, like I said, not all of them do it. But, um, once they're, like I said, once they're in that marriage, they may, they may do it with people at work and all this. It's, it really does seem just like part of their personality. And some will say, well, that's just how she is, or that's just how he is. And no. <laughs> okay, it, maybe it is, but it's not something to excuse away. Okay. Because they use that for gain, and they don't care if the other people who would have gained because they actually, like, did the work whatever it is, uh, don't get what they deserve, they don't care, <laughs> as long as they get what they want, and, um, you know, much, much of it, like I said, is attention, is what they want, but when they get in a relationship with this, they sometimes do pick somebody who's narcissistic, because then they can gain from that narcissistic person, like, in popularity, and anything that they're doing with that person is for their benefit, not as a couple, for the both of them together um, to benefit. No, they personally want to benefit off of that other person they're in a relationship with. And um, even if the person is narcissistic, they, they will find a way. And some of it could actually be like they're married to someone who's narcissistic and they use the fact that that person is narcissistic and go around telling people behind that person's you know, back, the smear campaign, about how bad he or she is, the narcissistic one. And that gets them sympathy and empathy and attention and all that they, you know, that they want from that other people. They, they might even use it to say, oh, I, oh, you know, they won't let me buy this at the store and I really, you know, need this and you know, it would help me at work or it would help me whatever way. Um, and people might actually give them the money um, to go and buy what they want, and usually it's something else with another, you know, that they they don't need. This kind of thing. Okay, they are very good at manipulating people. They they have practiced since they were very young, and like uh, if somebody else is say it's in the family, and one of their siblings is for whatever reason, getting some attention, like the sibling made good grades. You know, they got, they both got their report cards, or they all, however many of the, the size of the family, they got their report cards from school, and that one sibling did 
know really well, or two of them did, but they didn't because they're kind of slackers already, and they just don't want to do the work. They just want to, you know, socialize, get attention, have everybody look at them, you know, whatever grade. They could be teenagers, you know, um, say teenagers in high school, and they, they don't, you know, they don't really care to do the work. They just slide by. And whenever that other person gets attention, they will find some way to turn it around on them that they are somehow, you know, or they might even try to play the parents and get sad and cry and you know, say, I work so hard and I don't get by, I just get by, I don't get, you know, you see that they're going to turn it around to where that tension, the attention from their parent or parents will be on them or grandparents. They might run to the grandparent. And one of them, they've learned how to manipulate, or the, the, you know, one set of grandparents, and cry so they can get what they want. You know, much of it is attention. Okay, so. Okay, and these ones with these histrionic, histrionic behaviors, they will do things also that's a bit uh, dangerous for themselves. But they have an attitude that, no, nah, nothing like that's going to ever happen to me. That the whole thing. Um, they'll, they'll take risk. So, you know, that could, like I said, it could be against themselves. Such as, you know, like there's a bad weather and they're told to do whatever it is they're told to do. Like to evacuate or to go to their safe room or, you know, stock up or whatever. It is. They won't. They will not do it. Or, you know, just, just a little to make it look like they did, like if this is stock up, to, you know, so they can complain about how long the lines are. And we all know there are going to be long lines because other people are being smart and going out there to shop. And when they're told, this is what's coming, this is what you need to do. But they'll do it, you know, they'll, they'll milk everything for some attention. And they might even stay, like if it's a hurricane, they're told to evacuate. They were the ones that will stay. And then whenever something, if something bad happens, if, if it doesn't, they'll say, see there, I told you so. And if it does, then um, they'll come up with an excuse why they couldn't leave. It was just about this or that, and they were about to leave. And then, you know, they'll come up with an excuse, but then they'll play it. To where they're going to benefit off this and much more than attention like hand me over some money they'll they'll cry they'll all that so they can get some money or some objects or you know some of the objects can be big ticket items now big ticket depends on how you see it but i have seen people do this from everything from a new cell phone to an rv not a new one but still an RV. Okay. Or furniture. I don't know. Pardon me. Somebody was driving a little slow behind me here. But um, there's always at least one distraction. But whatever it is that they need, or they want, I should say. It's not a need. It's a want. Um, there's a difference between the two. They will milk it to get that. Even go as far as to start start up some kind of thing, you know, online where they can get cash or um, whatever it is. And it could be any kind of uh, crisis situation. It doesn't have to be due to weather concern, you know, weather or something like that. It could be anything else that that would people would see is that they're that they're in a crisis situation. And would be wanting to help. You know, good, decent people would say, I want to help this person. Well, that is until maybe those good, decent people figure out. You know, I saw one recently that they figured out the whole game. People had weren't going to help. But they, they know how to do it because they practiced a lot. Depending on their age, they've pretty much practiced since they were young. This has been my experience with them. Remember. Not all do this. Do this. Okay, I could go on and on about that. You know, like how they triangulate people because what they're really going to do is manipulate that other, the third person, and then they'll have somebody that they will gang up on, you know, against you with. 
um, you know, various things like this. And then they're go going to probably use the smear campaign in that. Um, but I think, I'm kind of curious what it is, but I have a pretty good clue, that some people t will take, um, and this is where I was going with it, some people take offense to it whenever I do videos on this topic and mention these, I said that, or mention these things. I believe that some of it is the physical, uh, the appearance, the, t the way they talk, the way they laugh, um, the cackle really, all of it really loud, the way they look. And um, now I, I'm saying this because just yesterday somebody apparently took an offense against um, a video I made about had made about um, this histrionic kind of behavior. And I've been doing this for years, making these types of videos. And quite often, if, like I said, if I describe them in it, you know, to, like I just went over, attack. But I really, like I said, I really do think it's the more of the appearance, okay? And even though I will say in the videos that not everybody who does this is histrionic. You know, some, some people dress a certain way um, out of, um, you know, to try to be creative. One person reminded me of <laughs> I already know that. Okay, they're being creative, and then maybe they are actually artists, and uh, or a stylist, or you know, people who, whatever it is that they, you know, that they are, they promote that, they help that, they work in that field, whatever it is, you know, and uh, it's just their norm. Yeah, but but the ones I'm saying they they really go to the extreme to stand out. They must stand out. They must have people looking at them. They want everybody to see them and nobody else. And like I said, they can be very vicious if somebody actually gets the attention. They can go beyond just crying to grandma or grandpa or both. It's, uh, you know, lash out in various ways. Yeah. You know, when they're adults. But anyway, like I said, somebody did that. I, I don't remember the comments in the past. I just remember how I felt about them. You know, I'd get one here and there, you know, by somebody who'd never written to me before. You know, never commented to my video, nothing. Just out of the blue, somebody says, and I just remember, hmm, did it come too close, too close to home? <laughs> that would be my thought of what they said. I remember how I saw them because it was pretty much, you know, Something I don't even remember. Like I said, I don't remember because it. Once they do it, it's blocked late and it's out of my mind. It's seriously, gone. <laughs> and uh, but the one yesterday was one very similar. And uh, in this one, um, in all of them, I knew the way the person was taking it. Um, what they were trying to do with what they re how they responded, and it didn't work because the person was wrong. They don't care if they're wrong, <laughs> as long as they're going to get people to notice them on top of something, you know, especially if they're being negative towards somebody, um, they want to be noticed. So, okay, now I don't want to think that I'm perfect and I never make mistakes. In fact, in my description, it says I could be wrong. <laughs> these are my opinions, though, these, as a social and behavioral scientist, I taught at college and university. I was a career student for many, many years. I'm more educated than anybody I know, and I know a lot of people who are very educated. I also know a lot of people who are not. So, but anyway, you know, this this one was, there was no doubt. You see, that kind of thing. And, it, and I can see it's, it's a lashing out at anybody who would, they even, if they, it's kind of like some people call narcissistic injury. They just take anything from what you say and they, they, they put it as a, um, you know, an injury to them, to their ego. And then they go into a fit of rage. You know, they call it narcissistic rage. And, um, no, I've seen some people, people with more histrionic behaviors do that. Yeah, seriously. They just whew, lash out. If they even, if it even hints at something like 
you know, maybe they dress very loud, they talk very loud, they um, cackle very loud, you know, it's supposed to be a laugh, it's a cackle, and uh, everything about them is loud and they want attention. If it hits to, close to home, they're going to lash out because they got to turn that negativity um, away on to the other person because that person is just a hater. You know, they just turn it and that person's a hater. Or that person's doing something wrong. That person isn't good. That person isn't that. You know, or the other. Or that person doesn't know what they're talking about. That, that person, you know, it's never them. It is never them. Okay. And they are people who think in terms of never and always. That's my experience. What about you? I'm going to wrap this video up. I saw something moving. I'm going to go figure out what it is. I'll talk to you on another video. Bye.